Thanks everybody for joining us today for our presentation where we're gonna talk about Payments Hub developers. In terms of an agenda, first Laura and I will kick off with introductions. I'll talk a little bit about our dev portal journey. Laura is gonna focus on developer onboarding, which is the main topic for today's seminar. And also the kind of integration process that we use at Payments Hub developers. I'll walk through some of the metrics that we're using, what we're tracking and how we communicate them. And then Laura will close out with a bit about dev portal management. So my name is Brian Long. I'm a director of product for Payments Hub Developers. Um, as Laura mentioned, our payment company is called North American Bank Card or NAB. They're a payments company. And you know, as the name suggests, they focus on payments in North America. I've been with NAB for about two and a half years focused on developer experience. And the dev portal that we're going to demo today is the primary product that my team has launched and scaled. So looking forward to sharing some of our learnings with you guys. I'll pass it over to Laura for an intro. Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Olson. I support the Payments Hub Developer Portal as a product engineer and a content lead. So I help build the features on the dev portal, and I also manage all of the documentation, including technical docs like our API specifications and integration guides, as well as our product tutorials and blog articles. Great. So let's jump into the dev portal journey. Uh, I'll start with our mission statement. So we're here to create, promote, and sell developer-focused payments products. Um, I think it's important to kind of understand who our customers are. So we're selling and partnering with ISVs. Uh, ISVs are independent software vendors. So if you are in the software space, just think of any technology company that's building custom software for a vertical. So be it retail or restaurant or automotive. Um, you can also think of this cohort of developers as point of sale developers. So they use our APIs to build apps and then embed payments within uh, the, the functionality of the app. Um, in terms of like the value prop of this, there's a massive total addressable market. Um, you know, by 2026, revenue from embedded payments is expected to exceed $183 billion. So basically tripling from last year. So huge total addressable market. But what I think is gonna be uh, way more interesting for this audience is our dev portal journey. So I'll speak a little bit about that. So I think uh, I wanna talk about how we launched and scaled the dev portal, and then how we have communicated some of what we've done with C-suite um, and the other leadership team here at NAB. And I think primarily we did that by building a great developer platform. So the first piece that we did with our initial release, uh, you know, just about two years ago, was we released our API docs and our API explorer, as well as some integration guides. Um, with that, we had a free and frictionless registration process that only required a few fields to sign up. As we all know, developers hate uh, having to give out their phone number and a, and a bunch of intrusive fields. So it made it easy to sign up. With subsequent releases, we deployed self-service sandbox credentials for select products. Also the ability to download SDKs and code samples so that developers could get started a lot easier. Um, and since that time, we've also added some additional functionality, like the ability for developers to order test terminals straight from the dev portal. If you're a point of sale developer and you're working with card present payments, you need a, like a physical terminal, a pin pad, and so you can order those terminals off, off uh, the dev portal. Uh, we've added a lot of other features that we'll walk through some of them in a quick demo today, including ability for developers to track their integration progress from start to finish through a UI. Um, I'll just walk you through some of the kind of basic features of the dev portal and just what the basic UI looks like. So here on the homepage, our URL is developer.paymentshub.com. Um, we've got some featured use cases here. I think it's important to just communicate that the dev portal offers everything from like lightweight e-commerce plugins. So this is like a low code, no code solution for a WordPress store. So uh, get a WooCommerce plugin up and running and accepting payments within a day up through very complex use cases. So like omni-channel payments is one where Let's say you want to build a point of sale application that's going to serve the retail environment and the merchants are going to have customers coming in in person to to take payments, you know, live payments in person. And then they would want that inventory to sync with, say, an e-commerce website. Um, so obviously a lot bigger integration there. 
We also offer some fintech products, so tools that allow point of sale developers just to enhance their business in different ways. Anybody who's worked with payments before knows that one of the initial hurdles is onboarding merchants to a payments provider. So we have a merchant boarding API so that uh, ISVs can do that programmatically. Zoom in a little bit for you here. So all of our products have a product homepage that uh, features language for one of our two like key user groups, obviously developers being the primary one, but business decision makers are a, a secondary user group. Some of our products have like a little interactive UI where you can see the order of the endpoints that developers would integrate into. Uh, you can see the HTTP verb and the URI down there. And that of course correlates to the, the API spec itself, the technical document. So you have a three pane viewer for all of our, our APIs. And some of them, like this merchant boarding API, has uh, try now enabled. So this whole API is really centered around the ability for merchants to uh, create new applications. So they're submitting their merchant information and then uh, submitting that to underwriting and KYC, and then they'll get back a mid. Um, I'll send out the URL so you can play around with this, but this is connected to our sandbox. It is a, a live sandbox. It's not mocked responses. Also like to show you our products page. So all of our products can be categorized here on the left pane. Um, so for example, card not present or e-commerce products here. Um, I mentioned we have some low code, no code plugins. Some of our products have the ability to get uh, self-service sandbox credentials. So uh, like this big commerce payment integration, you can get sandbox creds straight through the dev portal right here, copy and paste those creds and then see them later on uh, actual credentials page. For developers who are working with in-person payments, so card, card present payments, we also have the ability for uh, developers to order terminals straight from the dev portal. So you can do that here. We work primarily with a couple uh, terminal manufacturers. So Pax and Ingenico um, are the ones that we really partner with. Right now, all of our smart terminals are Pax. Um, so several features that are developer friendly that we've built into our dev portal that really just allow software developers to complete integrations uh, as effectively as possible. So I'll turn it over to Laura to talk about developer onboarding and integration. Great, thank you, Brian. Okay, so now let's dig deeper into the onboarding and integration experience for developers using the Payments Hub Dev Portal. So the first step in creating our routing program was really understanding who our users are. So not only learning about a developer's company, their role and experience using payment products, but <clears throat> as Brian mentioned, many of our users are building robust point of sale systems. So for them, adding payment technology is just one part of their job. These developers may not have experience using payment APIs. They just want to add payments as a small but important part of their software and then continue building the rest of their point of sale product. Conversely, some of our other users are not software vendors, but developers who are building a payment integration on behalf of a business. So for example, they might be turning a business's static marketing website into an e-commerce store. So our onboarding program needs to speak to all of these types of developers and show them which solutions will meet their needs with tools such as our interactive solution finder on the left, as well as guide them through the integration process step by step. So let's take a look at what that process includes, as well as the suite of tools that we've built to support developers at every step of the journey. So initially, a developer discovers the dev portal either independently through search or an ad campaign, or they're brought in by our sales team. Our sales engineering team then meets with them for a discovery call to discuss their needs and help identify the best solution for their business. We begin the project in our ticketing system and add all of the relevant information about the customer's integration to that ticket. So that data is presented at Portal UI for internal and external stakeholders to view when they log into their Dev Portal account. So from the integration tracker, developers can add API credentials, they can view the step of their, the process that they're currently on and access any files that have been provided by the Payments Hub team. 
So at each step of the process, the dev portal is a central point of reference where users can access the data and resources that are critical to their solution. Our onboarding tools are designed to keep all parties in synchronization, eliminating much of the email communication that can slow the process down. But when personal support is needed, our sales engineering and integrations team provide one-on-one -on -one assistance as well. So once a payment solution has been identified, the developer can review the documentation and get familiar with the API. So on each product home, users can view key information, such as the language and framework, compatible hardware, and more. So as Brian mentioned earlier, uh, if the payment uh, developer will require a test terminal to develop their app against, they can place an order for one on our hardware page. Um, if the developers certify their integration within one year, the cost of the terminal is fully refunded. So removing this financial barrier to entry is another way that our onboarding program makes the integration process as frictionless and accessible for everyone as possible. Before starting to write code, developers may also find it helpful to experiment with an interactive product demonstration to see an example of how the product can be implemented. For example, they can choose from multiple integration methods based on their use case, and then make a sample purchase in our sandbox environment and receive um, a mock response um, from the payment processor and um, or sorry, receive a real response from the processor, not a mock. Developers can also view our blog tutorials for step-by-step -step instructions on integrating products into their environment. So they can just select the tutorial on the language or product that aligns with their business requirements, and then follow along with the guide, which provides code samples and complete details about each step. Additionally, um, they can clone the entire code base in the Payments Hub GitHub repository, which is linked at the top of the article. The README files um, also provide onboarding instructions, as well as images of what the final product will look like. Next, the integrations team works closely with the customer to start the development process in our sandbox environment. When they're ready to go live, our integrations team reviews their code samples to ensure everything is working as expected. And then we add their certification letter to the integration tracker. We provision their production credentials and they can begin accepting payments, which completes their onboarding process. And back to you, Brian. Thanks, Laura. So when it comes to developer portal metrics, the thing I want to speak to this audience about um, is some of that, some of what we've learned in the last two years. We, uh, as I mentioned, we went to uh, Prod. We we released our MVP site two years ago, and we've been adding features to it since then. So I think the first piece of advice that I would have is really at the onset of a new program or a new initiative, work with your leadership to choose metrics that you're going to track throughout the next year or two that obviously are valuable to your business, um, but that you can also grow with your allocated resources and roadmap. And doing this will allow you to prove the value of your product really quickly so that you can iterate on it and continue to, to show growth and value. Um, now that we're a couple of years into scaling our platform, we're really focusing on a few of the most important metrics that provide revenue back to the business. And that looks like you know number of integration projects certified each month, the number of mids or merchants boarded from each integration and the revenue from uh, those integrations. But those were not the metrics that we started with two years ago. Secondarily, I think it's critical to work with your customers, external developers to continuously improve your product and get feedback on your roadmap. This is a great way to build trust in the developer community, get your name out there. Um, we do this through a couple of sources, including integration feedback from our sales engineering team. That was that second step that Laura mentioned, as well as our integration team, that third, that third group that works with our developers. We also have a newsletter that has calls to action for developers. So 
um, you know, we have various surveys and we do dev portal swag and, and, and all of the kind of customary, like typical things that dev portal uh, tech teams do. The third piece that I found to be really effective around metrics is communicating those results back to uh, your C-suite. So I send out a deck with uh, bi-monthly slides and the first slide is an executive summary. I can kind of show you uh, what that looks like here. So these are some metrics. The numbers are not real, but this is like a, a similar summary to what my, my executive summary looks like that gets sent out uh, every other month. And these were some of the initial uh, metrics that we chose to track for the first two years of the project. So total number of dev portal users that visited the site, um, the number of developer accounts that were created each month, number of integration projects first that were started, but then were that were certified. And then we do a, a bit with SEO or search engine optimization ranking. So for example, you look, you, you take your targeted keywords and then you see how many of them are in the top 10 Google search results. Um, kind of taking a look at what that would look like uh, in, in, in a real example here. So I mentioned we work with Ingenico terminals. So if a developer that has not heard of us say is, uh, searching for Ingenico POS API, right? They're gonna develop a point of sale system using an API that works with Ingenico. They might type in that search word and then that developer is gonna end up on our product page, which is our Ingenico semi-integrated API. Um, so we found that part of our strategy here is, is you know, using SEO to kind of drive people back into, into our site. Another piece that we're, we're doing uh, that kind of wraps up metrics is the blog that we've spun up. Laura just briefly showed you know, some of our technical articles. One thing everybody on this call knows is that developers hate formal marketing, paid ads don't really work. And we do know that developers love reading you know, short technical content from experts in their field. Uh, especially when it includes, you know, applicable code samples. So we spun up that blog. You've seen some of the technical articles. Our secondary user persona, that business decision makers. One thing we know is that they like reading uh, case studies that show how other ISVs that we've worked with benefit from working with us. So if you look at our blog here, we've got a few case studies that show like this first mile is an automotive ISV. So they're building an application for independent automotive stores. Um, and we really are trying to focus on some, some key results. So a way that we surface those metrics. So in this specific use case, they leveraged our merchant boarding API, which is that product I was showing earlier to take their onboarding process for new automotive shops down from weeks to just minutes with uh, the power of programmatic onboarding. So we found this to be a really effective way um, both to land new partnerships and to kind of promote existing partnerships that we've had. Um, yeah, in conclusion, the blog is one of the features of our platform that really ties in our SEO strategy and drives the metrics that we track. I'll turn it back over to Laura here. Great, thanks. So lastly, let's discuss the teams and the methods used to develop and achieve our goals for the dev portal. So our dev portal team is structured in a cross-functional way, meaning that the core team is relatively small and we partner with many stakeholder groups who help drive the direction of the dev portal. We work with internal and external stakeholders who operate in both technical and business domains. You can see that we have fewer groups of external stakeholders, but their feedback is weighted heavily. One way that we take this feedback is through our contact form, which prompts users to self-identify. And then the form is optimized to collect specific data role. The form submissions are automatically routed to the correct department and valuable metadata is attached, such as tracking information that tells us if the user arrived at our portal from an ad campaign, as well as which page they were viewing when they opened the contact form, all of which gives us more context to better understand their needs. So internally, our API engineer partners provide valuable support when building out features that interact with the API product environments. And on a day-to-day -day basis, 
we work closely with these subject matter experts and integration engineers to develop and maintain product specifications, integration guides, and the other resources that our client developers rely on. But in an effort to expose for both technical and businesses, we've built this partner reporting dashboard that provides a central access point where sales staff, POs, and other users throughout the organization can access key data. So this UI integrates with our internal red ticketing system to join and manipulate data to provide valuable insights for leaders and business decision makers. So this reduces siloing by clearly presenting the work that our integration engineers are doing, which enables other departments and leadership to self-serve the metrics that they need to make data-driven decisions. And finally, our admin search feature returns details about our client integrations, which also improves data sharing across stakeholder groups. Searching for a company provides all the information someone might need to understand how a client integration is going. So that includes the of the integration they're on, any sandbox keys that have been provisioned, and any resources that are associated with their account. So this is another way that we really open the gates for our business stakeholders and give them insight into the highly technical work that our integration engineers are doing. Exposing this type of data in a user-friendly way through the developer portal is a key part of our cross-functional team strategy. It promotes a high degree of collaboration and signals to our stakeholders that we invite their input and we value their contributions toward our common goal, which is to serve our end users by providing a highly valuable developer portal. So we would just like to thank everyone for your time today. We appreciate being able to share what we do at Payments Hub Developers with you all. And I will hand it back to Laura. Thank you very much. And you're getting a lot of uh, clapping from the audience. Um, I have two questions in the Q&A uh, row, and I think we have time only for those two. Let me ask the first one. Um, what is the composition of the team, the uh, strictly speaking developer portal team uh, that supports this portal and what are the roles and the skills needed to, to pull off what you just showed? Yeah, you bet. So our team is super small, and we've uh, you know we've we've worked to to keep the core team small while partnering with other teams throughout our org. So it's myself, uh, Laura as a developer and tech writer. We have a lead front end and a lead back end engineer, and then we have a, a QA. So we're doing QA in Cypress, automated QA. And that's that's the team. So small, agile team. Mm -hmm. Um, what front end stack did you use to build the site? Yeah, great question, Chris. So yeah, we're a JavaScript shop. So you know, JavaScript, React, Node, uh, Re React is the front end framework, and then uh, everything's hosted in AWS. So we're using AWS Lambdas for compute, DynamoDB on the back end, uh, Cypress for testing, Cognito for auth uh, up in AWS. But yeah, on the front end, it's it's JavaScript. Thank you. Um, one more question. Do you have a behind authentication and public portal that have different features and contents? If yes, how did you manage the uh, IA? Yeah, yeah, great question. So yeah, we have, you know, the portal itself is public. Some of the docs are behind a login, but most of them are in front of the login, uh, just depending on uh, some of the products we don't really want people digging too deeply into until they've had a conversation with sales engineers. So they're products that that will take longer to integrate into and certify into, and you just have to have a conversation before you dig in there. So some are in front, some are behind. Some features are behind the login, like that try now that I showed, obviously ability to order test terminals, all of that is behind the login. Integration tracker is behind the login. Um, we have role-based access that's uh, done through Cognito, so AWS Cognito. So, you know, there's like an admin user role. There are a few different user roles that we manage. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's managed through through Cognito and the AWS uh, UI. It's probably mm -hmm. the most simple way to say it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, there's going to be a break, uh, which will allow everyone or anyone to find Lara and Brian directly and ask questions. Uh, if you want to find them in the crowd, in the hallway track, 
uh, you can uh, open the chat window, click on participants, um, and then find that, um, well, here you can't see it, but once we're back in, in the big common room uh, with all the little icons, you can uh, you can see the, um, um, well, it's kind of like a cross uh, crosshair <laughs> symbol. And then you can find, uh, if you click that next to someone's name, you can find them pulsating on a map and then you can go there with a the double click. So um, we are planning to have a 10 to 15 minute breaks after the next presentation, as far as I know. Um, and then also at the end, so that you can ask further uh, from Lara and Brian if they if they can stay. Thanks, Lara. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, and um, see you later. <laughs>